Hello, welcome to the Prophetic Channel. I am so glad that you are here today. Today I want to talk about the crucifixion. I know we just celebrated Easter on Sunday, but I want to touch some scriptures in the Word of God. So if you have your Bibles, get your notepads ready, and let's get into the Word of God. If you have your Bibles, let's go to Luke chapter 23. I'm going to be reading in the Word of God, Luke 23, and then I want to be able to get into the book of Hebrews chapter 9 and get some verses in chapter 10. So in Luke 23, I want to talk about the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. So according to law, when Pilate decided to whip Jesus, the Bible says that, uh, that they use, the Romans use whips at the end of those, these whips, there was about two or three strands. At the end of these strands were bones or pieces of metal that when they would whip the person's backs, when the, the person, what they would do is they would grab the person and they would tie the person's arms and hands in front of a pillar and thus they would expose the back. They would tear off the clothing and they would expose the back. So every time they would whip, they whip Jesus, it would tear into his skin. So you have to understand that there was 39 lashes that were given by Roman law, 39 lashes that were given to Jesus Christ. Now, the, in some of the commentary, it says that sometimes just because of, of the beating, the lashes that some men took upon their back, it would leave them, some of them very, very weak, and some would even die uh, because of the lashes. So do you have to understand something? That when Jesus takes the lashes upon his back, his back is completely shredded. His nerves are exposed. His muscles are exposed. Everything is exposed. So you can imagine the pain that he's going through. He, his body is full of blood. Now, one of the things that I want to talk about is that blood is very necessary for redemption. See, if we go back to the book of Exodus, we find that God told Moses that he was, they were to sacrifice a lamb and put the blood upon the doorpost, upon the, each side of the doorpost and on top of the doorpost. And God said, when the angel, my angel sees the, the destroyer, he called it the destroyer, the angel of death, when the angel comes and he sees that, he's going to pass over that home and no destruction will come to that house because of the power of that blood, because of the lamb. Now, I want you to understand something. If they were just to put a lamb in front of that door, the death angel would still come and harm that house, because that's not what God told them to do. It had to be the blood. If there was no blood, and that's what the Word of God says, that without blood there is no remission of sin. And the book of Hebrews talks about that. That without blood there is no remission of sin. That's why Jesus had to shed his blood. Blood had to be poured out. It wasn't so much just the life of Christ, but more importantly, it was the death of Christ. He had to shed his blood to redeem mankind back to God, so that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ will be saved. Now go with me to Luke chapter 23. Look at verse 44. It says, it was now about the sixth hour, and darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. For the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Did you see that? It says, and, the, and then Jesus, verse 46, Jesus called out with a loud voice, says, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. In the, in, in the book of Matthew, it says, Eli, Eli, lama samathani, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Because at that moment, Jesus took all the sins of the world, past, present, and future. He took all the sins of the world upon him. He took all the sins of the world upon him. And God could not be in, in the place of sin. So God turns his back. Because all the sins of the world are upon Jesus. And this is the first time that this takes place is that God and Jesus are separated. Because of the sin that is upon Jesus. We have to understand that God is a 
holy God. He is a holy God. So the Bible says this. It says, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last breath. Now, I want you to understand something. You know, we celebrate Good Friday and we think that Jesus was crucified and he died on Good Friday. But if you study the scriptures, that's not, that's not when Jesus died. He did not die on a Friday. As you study the scriptures, you'll find that it was more than likely on Wednesday. And then from Wednesday, it was when they celebrated the Passover. So when the high priest, that same day, the Passover, when the high priest is sacrificing the lamb, Jesus is also offering himself as the lamb of God. You remember what John the Baptist said? He said, behold, the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Did you see that? Now look at it in the, in the word of God. So when Jesus gives up his spirit, he gives up his spirit. Now, one of the things that you have to understand, a lot of people think, well, it was a cross. It was a beam and it looked like a cross. And he took the cross to, to Mount Calvary. Mount Calvary, from what Jesus was, was about two miles to about two and a half miles that he had to carry this beam. Now, you have to understand that there was thorns placed upon his head and they were pressed into his head that caused uh, blood to begin to be poured out from, from, his, from his head. Now, understand this. Jesus was already has been already tried three times. He had been tried three times. He is weak. He is hungry. He is tired. And, and, and not only that, but now he is whipped. He's having, to be, he's having to endure pain. He's being ridiculed by all the soldiers. They're striking him and hitting him, pulling on his beard. And, and hitting him with his closed fist. So the, the book of Isaiah says that he didn't even look like a man. He was so beaten, he was so swollen that he didn't even look like Jesus anymore. Isn't that something? Now, so the beam was not a cross. The beam was straight across that was put upon his back. That beam weighed about anywhere from 75 pounds to 100 pounds. Can you imagine that? As Jesus, that beam was tied into his hands, into his arms, he had to carry it for about two, about two and a half miles, two miles to the, his, to the destination of the crucifixion. Now, that beam, it was wood and the splinters were, were pressing into his back. That wood was scraping on the nerves, that wood was pressing on his muscles because his skin was all torn into pieces. I want you to understand this. That when Jesus goes to the cross, it's not an easy thing. It is the, the, the Romans, they, they were not the inventors of crucifying people, but they perfected it. And it was a torture that was, that was slow and it was very, very painful. See, you have to understand, Saint, that when Jesus was placed on the cross, the spikes, the nails that were placed into his hands, you know, if they would have been placed here, it would have tore into his hand and it would have broken his bones in his hand. Now you have to remember the Bible declares that not one of his bones was going to be broken. So where did the nails go? They went in right here. There's two bones that run right here. The nail was, the nail was placed here. When the nail was driven into his hand from, and the Greek did from here up is considered the hand. So when they put the spike in his, in his hand, it went through the two bones, but it also severed a very important nerve that we have right here. So when Jesus is on the cross and they have placed a nail here and a nail here. And so what it does, the nerves will cause the hands to clench like this. And they call it like a cat's paw. And it would cause his hands to begin to be clenched. So he is on the cross. He is nailed on the cross. He is put upright. And he is tired, he is hungry, he is in pain. People are making fun of him. People are hitting on him. People are spitting on him. And he is put on that cross. And then his feet, they could not be like this. You know, because we see the pictures where his feet were placed one on top of another. And then the nail was placed on here. And that couldn't have been because once again, it would have broken a bone. So his feet were put outward. So in the back, um, I'm not sure what you call that, that nerve uh, or that piece of tendon that runs right behind your ankle. 
But that's where they made his feet spread apart like this. And they drove the nail in between both of those, those tendons. And that's what would hold up Jesus. So in order for Jesus to gain his breath, he had to push himself up just to be able to breathe because the weight of his body was being pushed downward and it was causing him to begin to suffocate. There was so much blood that was poured upon that cross, his nerves, his muscles, his joints, everything, his, his, everything was so painful in his body. But, you know, I heard this one a person that said, that said, you know, I don't know where they got it, if they made it up to sell, but they said this, they said, it wasn't so much the nails that kept them on the cross, it was the love. And how do we know that it is love? Because you'll see as you begin to continue to read the scriptures, and I encourage you to read the Word of God in the book of Matthew, read about the crucifixion, read about the burial. Awesome things took place. Did you know that when Jesus was resurrected, when Jesus died, and that people were resurrected from the dead, that people came out of their graves, the Bible says, that people came out of their graves and went back to the town. Can you imagine you know, you just buried somebody two weeks ago and now they're showing up alive because of the power of Jesus Christ as he was crucified. Power went up. The Bible says that there was an earthquake. The, the, the sky turned dark. There was a violent shake. The, the veil that separated the Holy of Holies was torn in two from top to bottom. In other words, it was God that tore it. What he said, there is no more division between man and myself. Now we are made uh, as one. We are made as one. Now you are my son. Now you are my daughter. Because Jesus has paid the price that if you were to call upon the name of Jesus, receive him in your heart, we become children of God. Isn't that powerful? That is so powerful. So the Bible says this. Jesus was on the cross. His joints, his muscles, his nerves were, it was so painful it was so, so painful that just for him to breathe, he had to push himself up. But just to be able to push himself up to gain some breath, it was, it was, it was complete torture. It was complete torture. See, the Bible says in the book of John, Jesus said this, No one takes my life. I give it. I lay it down. I am the one that's in control. How do we know that? Because Jesus, when he goes to the cross, he doesn't talk about hate. He doesn't talk about getting even. You know what he says? He says, Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. That is so, so powerful. You know, people, is, people that do us harm and people that talk about us and people that do things to us intentionally, we get angry. We do. We get angry and we sometimes we say we, 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 we wish that we could pray lightning from heaven to strike those people that are talking about us, that are doing us harm. But see, that's not, that's not what God wants. That's not what He wants to teach us. He wants to teach us to love regardless, to forgive. And that is so powerful. So Jesus on the cross, He yells out, Eli, Eli, lama samathani, which means, God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? So there's a separation of God and Jesus because Jesus takes the sins of the world. And at that moment, the Bible says that He releases His breath, His spirit. And then the Bible says that the rich man, Joseph of Arimathea, that he asked for the body of Jesus. And according to Jewish law, the, the, the ones that have been crucified have to be off before sunset. Before the sun sets that day, those uh, Jesus and the other two thieves have to be taken down. So, so as it's getting close to sunset, you know, the, the, the Bible says that they go to break the legs of the thieves. They break the legs so they're, not, they're no longer able to breathe, but they're able to suffocate and die. When they come to Jesus, they find out that Jesus is already dead. Now, you know the Word of God. The Bible says that there is a soldier, Roman soldier, he gets a spear and he, and he sticks it. He, he pushes it into the side of Jesus. And the Bible says that blood, blood and water flow. If you look up the medical terminology of blood and water coming out from the body, you know what Jesus suffered? He suffered a heart attack, a cardiac arrest. He was, it was so much pain that he was in that his body could take only so much. But he was still in control because he says, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. In other words, it is my will to do it now 
it is finished. I love that. It is finished. It is complete. Nothing else has to be done. Nothing else has to be added. Nothing else has to be taken away. But it is the power of Jesus that has saved us and transformed us. It is, isn't that so powerful? That is so good. Let me go to, to in the Word of God. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 9. And, and then I want to tell you about some things that are in my heart. Look at it. In, in, uh, let's go to Hebrews. Look at Hebrews in the Word of God. Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. And I want to go to verse 26. Well, you know what? Let me, let me start on verse 11. Look at, look at uh, Hebrews chapter 9. Verse 11. Then I'm going to jump over. I want to get down to verse 27. Look at verse. Let's start on verse 11. It says, When Christ came as the high priest of good things, that are already here, he went through a greater and more perfect tabernacle. That is not man-made, and that is to say, not a part of this creation. So, what is the writer talking about? Well, he's saying that when Jesus died on the cross, he presented himself before God Almighty and said, Father, the price has been paid. No longer was a, a lamb or another animal that was considered to be clean for sacrifice, there was no more no more sacrifices anymore. Even though the Jewish uh, community in the synagogues, and they continue to practice that because they didn't believe that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. Now, so they kept on practicing. But Jesus offered himself once and once only. There is nothing that can be added, nothing taken away. The, our, that price was paid in full. It's not something that is so powerful. Now understand this, that there is power in the blood of Jesus. There is power in the blood of Jesus. Look what it says in verse 12. For he did not enter by the means of blood of goats and calves, but into the most holy place once and for all by his own blood. Did you see that? He entered it into, his, and into, the, kingdom, into the kingdom of God with his own blood. Having obtained eternal redemption, the blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer sprinkled on those who are ceremonially unclean, sanctify them so they are outwardly clean. Did you see that? How much more? I love this verse 14. Look what it says. How much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself an un unblemished to God, cleanse our conscience from acts that lead to death? so that we may serve the living God. That is so powerful. That is so far, so powerful. I was so saddened to hear of a church, and I'm not going to say the name of it. I was saddened to hear of this one church in South Carolina, I believe it is. It's a mega church. And what the pastor stated was that they were not going to talk about, listen to this, they were not, they didn't want to offend the people. So they were not going to talk about Calvary. They were not going to talk about uh, the crucifixion. They were not going to talk about the blood of Jesus. It, can you imagine that? They were not going to talk about those three things. The resurrection, the power, the blood, what Jesus did on, on, the, on, on the cross. Because according to this pastor, in his words, he said... We don't want to uh, offend new people from coming to the church. We don't, we don't, we don't want to offend people. Well, if you, are, if you are doing that, then you are denying the power of God. You are denying the power of Jesus. Because in the blood of Jesus, there is power to break every chain, every demonic hindrance, every obstacle everything that the enemy brings to you, the blood of Jesus can break those things. Jesus, the blood of Jesus has power to change. See, I've been in ministry too long. I've seen a drug addict come to Jesus and change by the power of God. I've seen an alcoholic come to Jesus and change 
by the power of God. I've seen marriages be placed back together again when there was destruction. I've seen bodies be healed that are, uh, that are riddled with disease and sickness because there is power in the name of Jesus. If you deny the blood of Jesus, you deny it the whole word of God because it points to Jesus. Jesus is our creator. See, some, we have to understand this. That the Bible says that Jesus went into the into the earth, to the into the bowels of earth, and he took away the keys of of, of, of hell and of the grave, of Hades and the grave from the enemy. Now, can you imagine that? I, I think to myself and I say, you know, and I think that Jesus went into that cavern and the caverns of hell and took the keys away from Satan. And I can imagine Satan saying, Well, who and on whose authority do you have that? And I believe Jesus told him, well, have you ever read about me in the Old Testament? I am the high priest. I am the miracle worker. I am manna from heaven. I am the, I am the water that comes out of the rock. I am Jehovah Jireh. I am Jehovah Nisi. I am the Lamb of God. I am the, the, I am the, uh, of the, uh, of the, the, the captain of the Lord's army. Isn't that something? And then I believe he said, but maybe you, you don't know me in the Old Testament. You, maybe you know me in the New Testament. In the New Testament, I am the bread of life. I am the living water. I am the light of the world. I am the resurrection. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And I am the Redeemer. I am the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. On that authority, I have that authority to take away the keys from you. Isn't that something? That same power... We have that same power. We have that same authority because there's power in the blood of Jesus. There is power in the blood of Jesus. When the enemy comes at you, I have power in the blood of Jesus. When sickness comes at you, I have power in the blood of Jesus. When, you, when the enemy comes at you with destruction and depression and you can't see your way out, there is power in in the blood of Jesus. I don't know about you, but I've I've given my life to the Lord back in 1983 and I've never been the same since. I've never been the same since. You know why? Because it is real. It is real. I think I've I shared with you my testimony and 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 what God has done in my life totally changed my life. He changed my morning into dancing. He changed the person that I am. It was only by the blood, the power of Jesus Christ. That same power is here right now. That same power is right here to transform your life. You, you know, we, we, sometimes we, we, we have these questions. What will happen? What will, what will take place tomorrow? What's going to happen to me next week? You know, three things that I've been, I've just been hearing in my spirit. Just, it's just been resounding over and over and over and one thing is that darkness is coming. And I think I told you that a couple of, I, the Lord has given me a word concerning that. And in the past videos, I shared that with you. There is some type of darkness. There's something big that is coming. There is some kind of darkness that is coming. You and, and I, saints, we need to be prepared. We need to get ready for what is coming. You know, if, you know, and, and I haven't heard, the Lord has given me, any word on the eclipse that is about to happen on April the 8th. But you're hearing a lot of things taking place, you know, where, uh, you know, where it's going to cross seven cities, city, seven cities that are called Nineveh. It's a time of repentance. If the rapture is, is uh, it, you know, and I believe that we are so close. If the rapture was to happen, where will you spend eternity? Will you be one of the persons that will have to go through the tribulation? I believe in a pre-rapture uh, pre tribulation. I believe that the, the church is going to go before the, uh, the tribulation begins. I truly believe that. The church is not going to suffer wrath. I've gotten some comments that say, well, you know, the church has to. Why? If the bill has been paid, the blood of the Lamb, His blood has paid the price for us, we will not see the wrath of God. I want to say that again. You and I that are saved, born again, filled with the Spirit of God, washed in the blood of Jesus, we will not see the wrath of God. That is so powerful. So I want to ask you, where will, where will you spend eternity? 
you have an opportunity right now to give your life to Jesus. You still have time. I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. I don't know if something, uh, will it be the eclipse that something big happens? I don't know. But I know this, that Jesus is coming soon. You need to be ready. I would hate for you to go through tribulation and lose out on spending eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I pray for you right now? I want you, if, if you, you have said, you know, I'm not, I'm not ready. If I was to die today, I know I won't make it to heaven. Would you repeat this prayer with me? Every eye closed, if you would just say, Jesus, I come before you and I ask you forgiveness of all my sins. And at this moment, I receive you in my heart. I am a sinner, but I receive the payment for my sins. There is power in the blood of Jesus. And because of it, I will never be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, I pray for those that are sick. I pray for healing in their bodies. From the top of their head to the soles of their feet. In the name of Jesus. Sunday, uh, we, ha we were ministering at a church. It was Easter service. The worship was so, so powerful. The presence of God was so, so strong. As we were worshiping and praising the Lord, it's like the, the Shekinah glory of God just came upon that place. And we just worshiped and worshiped. And people by themselves began to come up to the altar. If you have a chance and the camera caught some of it, and you can go and see it on our Facebook at JJCC Ministries, and you might be able to catch a little bit of that, uh, uh, catch that the way the Lord was moving. The people began to come up. The Spirit of God was moving, touching people, you know, people getting words uh, from, from the Lord. And the present was so, so strong that uh, I wasn't, able, I wasn't e even able to preach the Word of God. There was so much blessing. There was a powerful move of God. Take a look at it. Go to JJCC Ministries. Take a look at that service. And I believe that the same anointing that was there on that day will touch you and will heal you sanctify you, redeem you, and cast anything that's not of God, cast it out in Jesus' name. That service was so, so powerful. Amen. If you need some prayer, I want you to call this number 210-670-1930. That's 210-670-1930. I believe that God will answer you, that God will move on your behalf. We are believing God for great and mighty things. Those of you that have come alongside of us and have supported us with your finances so that we can attain this mobile stage trailer, we are believing God that we're going to be, uh, we're going to win more souls for the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, spring is here, summer is coming. We want to be able to win souls, continue to have revivals. We want to see family members come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. That is so, so important. If you want to sow into this ministry, there are four ways in the description box that you can do that. If you want to sow into our ministry international, you go to jjccministries at gmail.com and you can get a hold of us there and we'll let you know how you can do that in the name of Jesus. We are uh, uh, excited for what God's about to do. And that mobile stage trailer, uh, we're, uh, we're probably about, I think we're already, I'm going to give you an update in the next coming program, but... I believe that we're halfway there. We're halfway there. We started raising funds in October and we are about halfway there. And so blessings to all that have sown into the ministry, that had sown seed. Uh, you are going to be a part of that end time harvest. Man, that's so powerful. That is so wonderful. Romans 8.31 says this, that if God is for you, no one and nothing can be against you. Romans 8.31 says this, if God is for you, no one and nothing can be against you. Also, I want to begin a newsletter. Uh, if you want to receive this newsletter that we're going to be putting out pretty soon, we're going to be working on it and uh, uh, trying to see how we can go ahead and get it to you. If you want to be a part of our emailing list, uh, send us your email to jjccministries at gmail.com. And let us know. Uh, I would love to receive that email. Uh, I, like, I would love to receive that, that, uh, that newsletter through the email. We will let you know what is going on, uh, where we'll be ministering, uh, what we're doing as far as outreach. And uh, we want to give you more information on there. Things that I can't say on YouTube, 
that I'll be able to tell you personally. God bless you. We love you in the name of Jesus. Pray for us as we pray for you. We'll see you next time on the Prophetic Channel. God bless you.